Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Mystery Monday on Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. And last week, we had so much fun doing the Nahani Valley with Stephanie looking at the tarot cards. I thought we'd do the same thing this week, except we've got two more friends on on our panel tonight these are or today these are my real life friends and they also have started their own channels too so we have ava and we have natalie how you ladies doing hi bryce i'm great how are you good 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 i'm so excited they have guys they have no idea what we're going to talk about with mystery monday day because i haven't told them because i thought i would let it be a surprise now before we get started though with mystery monday i do want to go ahead and show you guys their channels because again, as you guys know, we have Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. If you have not subscribed to her, please go ahead and subscribe to her. And then Natalie has a new channel she just started called Questioning the Narrative. So again, these are awesome resources for you guys. So you don't feel so alone. So I think that's one of the biggest struggles we have in this battle that we're in is we're all so separated from each other that literally... Um, YouTube and all the p content creators become like our family and our friends because this is where the battle really is is on the internet because it's a battle for information at this point so go ahead and subscribe to Natalie's channel and then Ava has Queen Midas Life Alchemy so go ahead and give her a subscribe to a new channel as well um yeah Go ahead and hit those subscribe button. I will put all the links down in the description box again, guys, for you guys. So you can just click on their, their links and boom, there you are. Hit subscribe. Now I am going to say too, I am going to extend our love challenge by one more week. So I had some people requesting one more week. So you have till next Monday to make your sign. I've gotten so many pictures in. You guys are freaking badasses. I will tell you from the subscriber who sent your um, truck from Canada, from Northern Canada. Well, everything in Canada is North to me down in Georgia, but um, and she wrote it on her truck and it is awesome. You guys are so freaking rocking it. You're all badasses. And so again, if you're, if you're like, what's this love channel uh, challenge, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so I found this sign on Twitter. I still don't know who originally made this sign. I wish I did so I can give them credit. And we are basically, I'm saying, make this sign. You can put it in your window, your car, your yard. And with this, wording i love you you're probably thinking you don't know me but if people can hate for no reason i can love and then email it to esoteric atlanta lc at gmail.com the lc is added in this is a specific email address just for this challenge so i make sure i get all the pictures in um and yeah we'll put it in one big video for everyone together so you have until next monday what is the date next monday i should have looked before we started but i didn't so pardon me the 28th the 28th is next Monday, so you have until the 28th to send this in to me, and then I'll make one big reel of all these signs from all over the world of us changing. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed. And so that is the, that is our superpower. That's our power move, is to change this to the love of vibration. Speaking of love vibration, though, we're going to get into some dark waters. Now, a few cut months ago, maybe even a year ago, I covered a story in the Czech Republic called Huska Castle. And Huska Castle is known to have this tunnel underneath it that people believe is the tunnel to hell. Now, I'm going to place a link to that story down in the description box below. But this story actually comes again from Washington State, where I've kind of been located for Monday Mystery. And this is the 13 Steps to Hell. This is an urban legend, but I believe, and ladies, I'll get your opinions. I think a lot of these urban legends are based in reality. What do y'all think? Yeah. Ooh, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a the lot. more that we learn. Yeah. <laughs> y'all, like, we don't even know what the freak, our, our freaking planet looks like at this point. So, <laughs> real me this, Batman. I do think that there are these portals that take us. And I don't actually believe that, like, hell is, like, a, a place. I think it's more of, like, a vibrational frequency. You know, like, if you look at the law of one, you look at fourth density negative planets. And believe it or not, according to the law of one, we're going to fourth density positive or service to other. But there's also fourth density negative, which is service to self. To graduate to fourth density positive, you have to be 51% service to others. So that means 49% of you can be an asshole, as long as 51% of you is literally empathetic and compassionate to other people. However, to graduate fourth density negative, you have to be 99% service to self. It's harder to graduate negative. Okay. And so we see what these, this bunch of people, this elite group do 
That's why they do it is because they actually want to go for density negative, believe it or not, right? Believe it or not. So when we talk about these portals to these like different dimensions, I, I think about that a lot. Like, is that what this is? Is it's taking people into like a fourth density planet or existence or vibrational frequency like Huska Castle um like the uh Nahani Valley we know is a portal but I don't know if that's good or we are still kind of confused about whether that's good or bad but let me tell you what we know about these 13 steps to hell so this is in the malt Maltby Cemetery I hope I'm saying that right in Washington state this is spelled M-A-L-T-B-Y Maltby Cemetery now this cemetery was built in 1901 one and allegedly it was built on a hill now a lot of people who know a lot about this folklore and legend believe that this hill was literally built around this stairwell that went into the earth okay that's why they built the earth around it i don't know um we'll see what the cards say now apparently where this stairwell is it's in a crypt of a very very wealthy family i can't find the name of this wealthy family but that's what the legend says it's this very wealthy family and there's seven 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 different locks to get into the crypt each lock requires a different key so the legend states it's really hard to get into this crypt now if you go down the stairs once you get to the stairs it's 13 stairs down once you get there you will see a vision of hell. Now they say that if a stool appears at the end of the stairwell, that means that you have sold your soul to the devil. You have to sit on the stool and you will not be allowed back up. Now, if you go online, you will find a lot of accounts of people um, going down this stairwell. I don't know if they're true or not, but people will say their friend will walk down and their friend will start screaming and the other friend up top will, will still see the friend and be calling out to them, but the friend at the bottom won't see them. They'll just see hell. Now, according to locals, this stairwell is not there anymore because the city went in and like put cement into the stairwell so people couldn't go down it anymore. They tried to cover it up. Or another story is they bulldozed it down. But that's basically the story. And again, like last week, there's not enough information. Like I tried to find who the family was. I tried to find all that stuff. It is near the Olympia, Olympia National Park, which we know anytime the UN gets involved in something, we know there's something there that's powerful, potent. I'm not going to say bad because I think it can be used for both. Um, and this is near there. So is it still in that same essence? Um, first of all, ladies, what do y'all think with the little information do we have that we have do you think this is totally folklore and legend or do you think that there is something to this story i think well, the there's something that stands <clears throat> go ahead go ahead Natalie. i think there's something to this story it sounds creepy and something that those people would do um yeah <laughs> do you have anything Ava? No. The whole fact that they uh, supposedly either bulldozed, which I don't know how you can go down in a hill and bulldoze stairs or poured cement over it means they're trying to cover something up. Yeah. You know, yes, they could be trying to keep people from getting hurt or, or whatever happening down there or loitering. But if, after all that we know with how this world operates, that sounds like a cover up to me. And what government institution has ever really cared if people got hurt? Like, exactly. <laughs> And they make it exactly. hard to even get in there. You need seven keys. You need to know where this place is at. Mm -hmm. So, like, most people probably didn't even know about it unless you were, like, in the group. Right. So, for the government to come in and bulldoze it seems kind of odd. Yeah. China or Bryce. I know. I saw, I saw that. I, saw, I was like, hey. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. Um, <laughs> I, I, at this point in time, my, my take on these types of stories is, well, there has to be some truth in it in order for the story to develop in the big to begin with so I, i'm sure there's a, at least some truth in it yeah like who's castle they built a whole damn castle on top of that hole to try to like keep it like to try to like keep it oh and that's one thing too i'll say that reminded me of who's castle so if y'all remember from the story of who's castle 
at one point they had a prisoner. This was like eons ago. They had a prisoner who was serving a life sentence. They told the prisoner and in, in what is now the Czech Republic, if we lower you down there, because they couldn't get to the bottom and pull you back up, like your sentence will be reduced. And they lowered him down. They heard him screaming. And when they pulled him back up, his hair had gone completely gray and he went crazy. Well, there are some the same cut types of stories around the 13 st steps to hell in Washington that some people will go down there and they come back like literally their mind has been altered and they're in this like super crazy, like they're not, they're never the same again. And that reminded me very much of Huska Castle and the, the similarities between these, these portals, these actual tunnels that are going into the earth. So what are your cards? Have you pulled cards on it yet, Stephanie? Not yet. Let's All right. Uh, keep pulling. Um, I wonder if there's truth in, yeah, they bulldozed it, but they then built something on top of it. We know mm -hmm. they like to do that, don't they? Yeah. So they it's like still in use. That. They're harnessing that energy, right? And mm -hmm. it might even be a passageway to Agartha, too. Are you ladies familiar with Agartha? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did a whole deep dive on that, and I, I wasn't believing it until I started researching, and I was like, well, damn, what's under us? Like, there's a whole yeah. world under us. And I think some of these are tunnels into this civilization that's on, that's both good and bad there there are good entities down there and bad entities down there just like on our earth we have good and bad um so but they don't want us to know that they don't want us to know that there's a whole like universe underneath our our feet right um and so sometimes i'm like is that what these are these places are, are these literal like tunnels into the underworld which is not i don't want to say underworld some people have a bad idea about that but again there are good beings under there there are literal good it's not like it's hell you know it's um it's uh both good and bad so and you ladies are welcome to bull too if you want to we'll see what the cards have to tell us about these 13 13 too right like yeah. I'm, I'm shocked it's not actually 12 because they really like that number 12 but they did 13. Hmm. all right so um it looks like they've been working on pushing the public about this, um, like kind of like last week, because the page of pentacles, it's like um, communication of the actual physicality of this place. Um, and uh, like kind of like last week, I was getting things will eventually come out. I'm getting that that's just temporary. It's not going to last. They think the truth will come out about this place. Um, it's actually going to make, I feel like people really, really like, uh, check in with their emotions a little bit. This I feel like there's some disturbing stuff that we're going to be finding out about that place because the, the Page of Cups is like emotional communication. Um, and then... Is this an entrance to one of their laboratories? We'll say it that way. You guys know what I'm talking I, about. I'll have, to, I'll have to draw in a second. But I will say, I think it's going to turn good because we've got the Three of Cups. That's like a celebratory card. Um, but it's definitely under key right now this 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 is a power person this is person of power um so it's definitely something that um not exposed yet yeah. but i'm getting it's real i mean i'm get to answer the question i'm getting it's real and on the bottom of my deck i got the moon card so it's like a shh kind of a thing mm -hmm. so is this a opening to a portal no, I'm well, a portal, but also I just had an idea because it's in a apparently it's in a crypt of a very, very wealthy family, which of course there are wealthy families that are not involved in nefarious stuff. But let's just say for shits and giggles that this is one of those bad wealthy families. Is this an entrance then into one of their, we'll say, laboratories that are um, under the ground? Um, can I share what I got? Yeah. Okay. And these, okay, so the first thing that jumped out to me was the magician. So this does look like, you know, that is a, a, a magical area that has been used for, um, like, they might be harnessing the energy. Like uh, Natalie said, it might be bulldozed and, and actually built over. Um, this, to me, is the public, like, yeah, we'll tell you about it and we'll let you know and we'll create all this intrigue about it and around it and like we'll give you one stick but there's all these other sticks that you can't access like you can't you well you don't really know the whole story and then um the page of wands so uh, wands are fire and it, it's like kind of to me she's like rejoicing like yes I, this goes with this card 
And it's like, oh, we have the story. We know the story. We're letting you know a little bit. But ha, huh, we're doing all this other stuff behind your back. And uh, fire, energy, um, passion, and um, uh, even aggression or, you know, whatever could be down at the bottom of the stairwell. And I had the world at the bottom of the deck. And to me, automatically, I was like an entrance to another world, another a portal, um, whatever it could be to tunnels, to nefarious things and then i also got i got another meaning to this world card as um <clears throat> like stephanie mentioned it's the ending of that cycle so it's 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 coming to a close what has been going on around this spot um but just the energy i got off of that read and the downloads is there has been something weird going on in that area it's possibly covered up and built upon it possibly is a portal but it's coming to an end yes good 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 i got something very interesting in the cards so i'm i'm using a brand new deck and i'll just show the audience it's called the gilded tarot um now i could probably take this um there's a card in here that I, I ended up getting a download and I, I just took my pendulum and I, I just confirmed that I'm getting a correct download. And that could be completely wrong because, again, these are just divination tools. So take what resonates. But they are keeping something uh, there. And um, I want you guys to really take, if you know your Bible, take a look at this card really quick. This is a book in the Bible this is depicting. It's an um, Old Testament. I can't see it. My eyes are terrible. So Daniel, I feel a the lion and a, there's a lion and like a, what's on the other side of the lion? I can't there's see There's a bull. bull. All right. There's and a bull. Eagle. There's a lion. There's an eagle. And then there's this person. Um, it's kind of depicting the book of Daniel. Now we do know that Daniel is not complete in the Bible because Daniel purposely hid it until this particular time period. I got this weird download. Now, I could say this about any time I get this world card for anything, right? But I have a weird feeling. Um, maybe not necessarily the book of Daniel, but some sort of scripture might be hidden there. Oh. Okay. That was a question. And I'm also getting the strength card. I don't believe this is actually a bad place, guys. I'm actually not getting it's a bad place. It's not necessarily hell. What I'm getting is this place is probably something like Argoth Argartha. But it does lead into it does lead into a laboratory. I think they made it something horrendous. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. actually something truly good. I yeah. think it will be turned into something good because I do get an ace on the question. But I'm mm -hmm. getting that originally and going forward, it's going to be for the good. But I think they're keeping something there, kind of like uh, the place in Rome. Are we allowed to say that place? I think you got it almost three times. Okay. Yeah, snakehead. <laughs> I call it snakehead. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, I think I think they're hiding something there specifically that has to do with either scripture or something that has to do with spirituality. And I'm just getting that intuitively. And then I checked on my pendulum and I got I, I, I confirmed that it was a yes. Again, I can only channel. I don't have my board on me, but I can only channel my own uh, higher self with it. But um, I just feel like something is there that from the Bible. I don't know. That's Can getting. we pull just on Washington state alone? Like, what is it about? I know every state has its own stuff. I mean, the deep South is full of it, but there's something about Washington state that, um, and maybe it, it's the conducive because of the weather of Washington state where it's so rainy all the time that maybe it, it can harness a different energy, but I swear to God, studying Olympic Olympic national park has been what it's been hard for me. There's been a lot of really dark stuff coming out of that park and the park looks beautiful. Um, but it's almost like, I feel like the state of Washington, something is being harnessed. Something there is being used. And, um, and so let's just see what, what spirits God has to tell us and or what we can know right now about that, that area of the world. I wonder if it's on top of a certain type of stone as well. And then um, because it's so wet, you know, water is a conductor of energy and uh, uh, current, you know. So I bet all of that adds in to the mix. Because you think about Louisiana, Louisiana's boggy. I you, yeah. Yeah, so boggy is that, and there's a bunch of like moss, <laughs> yeah. um, 
and like mosque it like travels you know hundreds and hundreds of miles are all connected um oh, and yeah, yeah exactly like too they are like a network mm -hmm. there's a dark witch coven in washington so are, I got they, the are they sword. using the elements of washington like that 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 nature has provided to harness oh, that probably energy? that's what they yeah. do Queen of Swords, Queen of Swords can be good or bad, but because I have it aspecting with the magician, I feel like this is a dark witch coven. Mm. And um, but uh, jokes on them soon. Will for because Washington. I've been to Washington. It's beautiful, and we're not saying that people from Washington are bad. You guys are cool. We're all dealing with this. Every so I think I think there's a group, a small group of demonics that have yeah. literally harnessed something out of that state. Is what I'm saying. So some you in. This is a group. Oh, you know what? Because, yeah, let's let's ask, is Washington connected to the U.N.? Well, it is because the U.N. has a stake in uh, Olympic National Park. Hey, Bryce, I got my uh, oh. <laughs> daughter card. They're passionately involved in Washington <laughs> State. Yeah. God. Yeah. I can <laughs> never look at this card again, ever, ever again. Baby gravy and card. It's all your fault. The baby gravy. The baby gravy. Well, let's, um, can we try this? Can we try to harness our channel? I don't know if this will work. Let's see. Can we try, and I feel weird because we don't chant, I mean, this isn't the energy. Can we see if Washington State, the land of Washington State wants to tell us anything? Because we know that Saturn is upset because Saturn has been used and abused. Okay. Washington can Washington State yeah. tell us, any, the land there, tell us anything about Will, will will the land be a, want to tell us anything about what it's gone through basically in this oh. and i don't and i'm gonna say i don't think this started with the uh europeans going into that area i think that area i think as long as this timeline has been at play that, that these areas have been used by all sorts of of different beings and creatures and humans and every single one i've gotten so far is a major arcana oh uh, wow four, four cards major arcanas what the heck so Washington wants to speak. Yep. All right. Let me see what I got here. Okay. So there is some sort of power structure there that is built off of um, maybe the church. Or, again, Washington is saying that there are nefarious beings, the powers that be, that I feel like have a – they're using something – let me see. How do I put this? Oh, oh, hold on. Got the chariot card. Um, I feel like bad off worlders. I was bad off worlders. Mm -hmm. off worlders is in the area. Yeah. Because sometimes when I get the chariot card, I actually think like biblical, like the book of Ezekiel goes into the chariots in the sky, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I'm always wondering if there is a, an area that don't they have a lot of UFO sightings there? Am I correct on that? Mm -hmm. I feel well, like they all do. All that coast all the way up and down because Alaska as well, right, Natalie? Like, has a lot of that, too. Mm, yeah, we have a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. Like, easy to hide. That's something I learned with Olympic National Park because part of it's, like, rainforest. It's mm -hmm. very easy to hide. And you know how California has – there? there's a lot of under um, – under the continent sub networking that goes from like uh, California, I think all the way into Colorado or Arizona, like way. And I wonder if it's the same with, well, Washington, they could just go around the straight up coast yeah. or whatever. But um, that would make sense if, if, if that's all being used as network, you know, that's straight up. Yeah. There, yeah. I actually feel like there's going to be a lot of divine feminine doing a lot of healing on these grounds going forward forward is what Washington is saying. Um, and also there's going to be a, a lot of physical, the, this is pentacles, king of pentacles. So um, it's going to take its sovereignty back and uh, 10 of cups, healing, harmony, beauty, happiness, family. So there's going to be a lot of healing that happens. And I, I feel like it's, I feel like you guys think it's beautiful now. I, I feel like I'm getting, it's going to be a thousand times more beautiful once it, the land is all healed and we go forward in the new world. I wonder if, if um, the rain in Washington is actually uh, natural to that area. You want to pull I was on kind it? of thinking that I was wondering if the rain's going to stop or yeah. just not be as, you know, I think a lot aggressive. of places, it's not natural. I, I don't think the weather here is even natural because it's mm -hmm. changed so drastically since like, 
So I grew up in the eighties and nineties. And so I think you guys have too. But anyways, like here in the Northeast, when I was a kid, we would get a reasonable amount of snow and everything, but it was like the drier snow. It was the snow that you can go outside and actually play in without feeling like really nasty. Um, mm -hmm. And then our summers were just regular old summers. They weren't, we had our humid, really, really humid days, but most of it was hot, but yet comfortable enough where you can actually spend outside. Nowadays, the humidity is like the deep South humidity. Like I, and I lived, in, I lived in Florida at one point when I was really, really small. So it's, it's a very dense, dense humidity. It will get to 90 degrees to a hundred degrees easily. And it will stay like that for a long period of time. And then it's like the winter, then it's like polar opposite. And we didn't have that growing up that I can remember. So I feel like it has been altered. And I've heard it's like they want us to stay inside. Yeah. They do extremes, a lot of rain, a lot of snow, a yeah. lot of cold, mm -hmm. a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. I have heard too, and I don't know if this is true or not. This is just something I've heard. I don't know how to prove it. If not, we'll just see that water isn't actually natural to our planet. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's the yeah. oceans were brought in when um, flooding of Atlantis. Wild. <laughs> right? Like what the hell's under the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> what cities are under there like you know exactly wow. i don't know i don't know guys i'm just putting it out there i've i've seen i've run across that a few times now i have no way of researching that to know if that's true or not like we don't this is just something it could not be true it could that could be junk conspiracy i have no idea um but uh I mean, I've like I've talked about before, we know we understand there's a possibility that there's a firmament over us, like we're living in like a snow globe. So does that mean the sky is actually blue? Or is that the color of the firmament? I think it's the color of the firmament with my honest opinion on that one. Same. Same. But we can't prove that until it's provable. So but it's just it's just, you know, once the more the more you learn, the less you know, you start to question literally everything. Mm -hmm literally everything yep and it's one of those questions kids always ask and like kids know yeah they're like i'm calling bullshit on this like five years like <laughs> bullshit <laughs> so i pulled cards on if um the rain in washington state is natural i actually think there's something karmic about the rain that they receive with that judgment card I don't know if it's karmic to the people or karmic to the land. Um, I almost wonder, let's see. I think it's the people. So people working in that, like the powers that be sort of a thing. Um, and it's like what they tell you, what they broadcast, it's just a bunch of fluff because uh, wands are fire. You know, a page of wands, fire. Um, it's, it's just like hot air, you know what I mean? Like it's not mm -hmm. accurate the, why they tell you it rains. Um, I mean, and what didn't did they, they oh, go ahead, sorry. Didn't they get a bunch of wildfires, um, in 2021 or 2020, which mm -hmm. it, isn't that random for Washington? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, because it rains so much, you know, how would the woods be dry enough to continue with a fire? We know a lot of these wildfires aren't exactly started naturally. Yeah. They're poured down on the forest by airplane. Yeah. We've had a lot recently. The last like two to three years, we've had a lot of wildfires. And I don't remember growing up there being that many wildfires, but we they burnt like millions of acres up here in the last couple of years. Yeah. So if anybody watching us from Washington state and you know, the answers to these questions, let us know. I will say too, I've told this to Catherine Edwards a lot in my research, you know, we think of the United kingdom as being very rainy and it is very rainy. It's very rainy. It's kind of like Washington state, but in my research, uh, the United kingdom, that Island used to be tropical. Which oh, is wow. Yeah. Ooh, I just wow. got a, I just got an idea. So you're talking about karma to the people. First thing that I was thinking, like what type of industries are up there that might be detrimental to the land or the people, but then also, so y'all just stay with me. Have you seen twilight? Yes. You I've know how the they lived book, in, but yeah. Well, they lived in Washington and it's rainy. It's dark. It's easily easy for them to hide. So who else are going with there? this? Yeah. Yeah. We're going with <laughs> so that, that karma, could be for th that 
So let's ask, are there um, non-human, human mystical creatures that literally live up there? Because they've made it so they can, they can hide there. Or else they're going to glow in the sunlight like uh, Mr. Edward yeah, there. They're going to, what it. is it called? Glamour? Glamouring? I'm guilty Natalie, of loving that it? book series. I am guilty of loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bryce. <laughs> I read the first book and I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> I couldn't read them fast enough. I'm not, a, I love, listen, listen, I, in real life, I love romance, even though I have no idea if a man is flirting with me. I do love romance. I love the flowers. I love the sweet, the love notes, all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to reading books, like I'm bored by romance. There was a lot of action in those books too. That wasn't just romance. You just had to get past the first book. I like, yeah, reading, I like reading murder mysteries. That's my favorite fake murder <laughs> mysteries. That's when I'm like, ooh, ooh, tell me more. Um, so, no, I'm not really into like the book romance. I read that Fifty Shades of Grey, the first book, and I was like, this is crap. <laughs> I stopped. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't I read those. I, I yeah. didn't even start reading those at all. I just had no just, interest. Yeah, I just don't like the idea that goes into, um, I believe that you all were talking about it with Cindy, how sex is like, all this other stuff added in to almost like yeah. model it up and make it mm -hmm. disgusting or shameful or um, adding violence in with it like that sex is a sacred thing. And I just yeah. that they, you know, how media does and it just sensationalizes and sensationalize these books and these movies to like throw it at people and program. And I was just like, mm mm. I think I read the first book and I was like, ow, ow. Like, it was just like gross, ow. Like, I don't care how hot you are. No, that's not happening. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> weird. Whatever. I don't know. I got some strange me. cards. <laughs> I actually don't. Question? I don't oh. think it's nef I don't think it's nefarious beings hiding there. I think it's something else. So, yeah, oh. something is hiding there with the two of wands because it's like, you know, uh, closed <gasps> off, you know, yeah. can't come through. <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm getting it's some sort of elemental. Um, so nine of wands and nine of that. pentacles. Um, I almost yeah, wonder if this would be dragons and this, this would be elementals. In your first card, it drew my eye in the top, the top right corner of the card. Look at the wings. Yeah, and that's what came to my head. There are leprechauns in Washington State. I did when I study the leprechauns in a deep dive. There are leprechauns that people say they see up there. Yes, guys, if you haven't, uh, welcome to the Great Awakening. Leprechauns are real. They're real. If you <laughs> could see them, I think they they would their lives would be in danger if they were seen just because of the powers that be. I also feel like this signifies the rebirthing of showing themselves to the public eye. Yeah, kind of like our off world or friends. Well, and think about this, the Native Americans, they had stories of, of the little people and the giants and the fairy. They talked about them openly, you mm -hmm. know, so what makes us think they went away? You know? Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, yeah. I'm blinking a lot. I'm having allergic reaction, I think, to my makeup. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my voice is hoarse today. Jeez. <laughs> um, but my cards are kind of weird today. I keep trying to, I keep smudging them, but I did pull this one and it just reminded me of like all the little elementals that are probably hiding away. We've got like, yeah, oh look at yeah, the, look at the wings in the back. Mm -hmm. That's totally what I got from, from your read, um, Stephanie. And then you pulled that card too. I mean, the King of Swords, cool. Natalie. <laughs> yeah, it was. And this just popped out at me, the My King of Swords too. Mm -hmm. Hmm. We know that Seriously, like, what's that there as well. <laughs> hmm? huh? Lots of Bigfoot sightings up there. Um, and according, yeah. I think it's the Cassiopeians that talk about Bigfoot is actually like a cuddly. It's like a puppy. Like they're is like, it like Chewbacca. They're like, and does he go around going? Rrr, 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 rrr. They're like not. They're like not <laughs> anything to be afraid of. Apparently, they're they're like they're like when they when they get spot, they're like oops. You know, like they're just very. Do they give big bear hugs? I don't Stephanie, know. Was it you that was like, I wanted my own Chewbacca? Maybe yes, I want my own we'll Chewbacca. Squash. I want a big bear hug from a Chewy. I mean, we have <laughs> we have Bigfoot here in Georgia as well. I mean, anytime you get into these like mountain uh, range, like I'm at the base of the Appalachia. I mean, there's just man versus nature. Nature always wins. There's just elements to nature that you will never learn how to control. You know, it is somebody. Your, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. There was a an account of um, 
a Bigfoot sighting or somebody was talking about a, a body that was found like sitting up against a tree that it was dead and it didn't look like any of their stuff had been pillaged or anything, but they were crushed. And turns out that Bigfoots are cuddly, supposedly they're cuddly and it wanted to hug this person, but it hugged them too much, too hard and killed them. Oh, okay. that's yeah. sad. So, well, could what, you imagine Chewbacca when they does like that. Lift off the hug? <laughs> Chewbacca does that. Chewbacca can hug you so tightly that he can literally, like, you know, suffocate you. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I won't go into my Star Wars knowledge here, but um, <laughs> <laughs> too late. <laughs> um, I wonder if Washington was tropical. I wonder if they had palm trees, for instance. I don't know. At one point. I mean, I mean, listen, I, Washington's beautiful. I've been there before. I wouldn't want to live there, though. It's too rainy for me. Like, that's, it's too much. Yeah. Too much, too much. Um, I just wonder if it's going to change, though, you know? I, I think everything's going to change. I, I think, think so. I think the whole world as we know it is going to change. Um, are there ley lines, ley lines in Washington that are very powerful? Like, we know New Orleans was placed where it was placed because of some ley lines. Um, are that, is that what they're harnessing, too? Let's see. I wonder if the whole earth was tropical because like up in Alaska, we have evidence of palm trees too. Um, That's what I was, I was starting to download about that. Cause I, I think it was tropical at one point. I think the powers that be manipulated so badly that only what could exist existed in those particular parts of the world. Um, yeah. And we have a big um, harp facility up here. Oh, wow. oh, really? Mm -hmm. Of oh, course, because where there's a ton laughing. of snow. And I'm like, you're probably just creating all this snow <laughs> to cover up um, stuff. Oh, crap. I just dropped half of my deck. Continue. I'll tell you all it funny story. Like um, so growing up, my dad had a lake house in Alabama. And like, it never snows here, you know. And we would go snow skiing in Colorado with my dad from time to time. But in this little town in Alabama in the wintertime, they had this place where you could ski and they would make snow. Like that, a machine that would generate snow. And so mm -hmm. we decided to go. And my sister and I had our full on ski outfits on. We get to this place and like everybody else is in jeans and like cut off shorts because it's like redneck America. Right? I love the rednecks. I mean, at this point too, the rednecks know what's going on. And literally it was the funniest thing because it was like, if you couldn't stop yourself going down the hill, the gravel eventually would because it was all <laughs> fake snow. So it just makes you like they can make fake snow. And it was like, it would be like, like 70 degrees in the winter time, but they would have the snow pumping, trying to make snow to keep this one. It was like one little slope, one little slope. And everybody's in their jeans, their blue jeans, like this one little hill. So that's yeah. hilarious. That's funny. Um, to answer your question, Bryce. So I do get that they do have ley lines that um, are being harnessed because I'm getting that Queen of Swords. Get the Queen of Swords keeps coming up. So because I, because of the questions we're asking here, I wonder if this is again has something to do with dark entities doing dark things, uh, manipulations. Um, but it was like next to the high priestess card, which again is why I'm getting that it's probably not exactly aspected well. Because um, mm -hmm. the high priestess card is very secretive. There's lots of probably stuff we don't know about. And then, <clears throat> and I feel like at this point, uh, military actually has taken it. I was going to ask like, that too. Have they taken over? Yeah, that? there's definitely <laughs> military stuff happening there. But you're not going to know about it. This is confusion. This is chaos. Um, I feel like. I feel like it's been just one big shit show up there, to be honest with you. And that they got to keep it very discreet. Again, that could be, again, what the high priestess card is very discreet stuff going on um, with the military. Well, this is my question now. So we know that Washington is like extremely blue. Like it's like navy blue. Oh. It's so blue. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> like it's like it's the opposite of Georgia. Like, you know, it's like navy blue. Um, and they were totally like really into the whole narrative of the, you know, the sniffles that went around for a couple of years. Yeah. Yep. So, and I'm not, I, again, I'm not someone that likes to say this is a movie because this is a real battle, but I'm going to ask, cause you said it's been taken by the military. Obviously this is a very potent area was Navy blue Washington relicking in the Navy blueness of it all to keep people locked down while they were making that transition of power. Mm, was that a, a play by the good guys to play on they're already lean the way they already leaned in order to keep people safe while they battled that you're sense. being resourceful yes 
I oh, think better, right? so. This looks like there's six ley lines. Oh wow! Yeah. And look at so the Washington. Um, you see that one point? I'm like pointing to my screen, like you guys can see it. You see that one point where like one, two, three, four, five. Like they're all together right there by the Pacific. That's where the the, the park is. Oh, 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 okay. That makes a lot of sense. sense. Yeah. yeah. I can send, do you want me to send this picture to you? Yeah, right. send it. I'll, I'll add it into the uh, editing process and I'll see if I can zo zoom in on that. All right, guys, give me a sec. I got one one or two more cards and I think I got my answer. I think I have my answer. I just want some clarification. I mean, literally, if they tried to do something like that in Georgia, like I said, they were trying to bring us snow. They would ha literally have to like bring a blizzard to Georgia to get people to shut down because they're not going to lock us down. We're too red. We're like bright red down here. They're gonna be like, F you, you're not shutting up. <laughs> like so. So they would literally have to bring a fake snowstorm in just because we can't, we don't know how to drive this out. So yeah. um, they did okay. Dallas last year. I mean I got my answer. We okay. A real winter. Okay. So yeah, collaboration for mm. justice. So mm. yes. Yep. Okay. And so it was like uh, being put out on your TV, on your radio, because that, that's swords is uh, the page of swords is communication by words and thoughts. So, yes, being told to be locked down so you're not leaving your home because they're changing it. Mm -hmm. Wheel okay. of Fortune. So, I would say that would be a yes. So, for the Good Patriots call, right? in Washington, there you go. For the Patriots in Washington, I know that was painful for you guys, but. Hopefully that makes you feel a little bit better um, that they basically used, used the bad guys at their own game. So, all right. So are y'all ready to switch gears a little bit? Or do you still have more stuff you want to pull or ask on Washington? I can switch gears. It's just up to you. Up to you guys. Let's switch gears. I didn't even know right. we were switching gears. So go, uh, I'm just going with the well, flow. No, we're gonna, we're, so today is Monday the 20th and this is the start of airy season. And so, as you guys know, last, uh, la I don't say last month, because I'm trying to get away from that. But last season, Pisces, we did a read on Pisces. And I really don't like these monthly reads because we created the months. They're not, you know, dates are not. So I don't want, I don't want truthers to get attached to certain dates because the dates are man-made and we're oh. working off of a galactic calendar. And so I think that I, in my opinion, the closest we get to the galactic cal calendar is the Zodiac. And so now that we're in Aries, can we do... Can we pull on what this season is, this Aries season is going to bring for humanity? Just a general reading. Aries is a fire sign. Uh, there's three fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Um, I've said before, as an Aquarius, as, a, as an air sign, um, all of my most, I guess my funnest relationships have always been with Aries. I have all three of those signs in my, like, my birth chart, like, oh, right really? up the top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a water element, but I've got a lot of fire. <laughs> I, for some reason, like my rising is Leo, so that's fire. But for mm -hmm. some reason, I have all the fire signs, the Aries. It's like my air blows into their fire. That is, if I'm going to get arrested one day, it's going to be with an Aries. Like, I'm just telling y'all, that's what's going to happen. So it just, the fun just never stops. It just keeps rolling <laughs> into it. You know? so, oh my gosh. We each other. Um, so yeah, I dated an Aries once for a while. At, back in Los Angeles, that was a fun relationship. One of my cousins is an Aries. That was a that's a fun friendship, cousinship. Um, you just feed each other. The air and the fire. So, wow, I got some interesting stuff. All right, so I pulled tarot, but I also did a quick uh, three card spread with my Queen of the Moon Oracle, since we're on astrology here. Okay. And uh, so the first one is the waning gibbous, which is uh, wisdom. So I feel like that's trying to indicate here that we um, might gain some extra knowledge going forward in this particular sign of Aries. Um, and I feel like... Hmm... Maybe it's also indicating we need to be more wise. We need to, um, I'm more the ladies. What? More, more I got the hermit. So that's almost like looking with, you got to go within to get more wise. Yeah. No, I agree with you on that. And I also got assessing. So I feel like this is a good time to start. Assessing yourself, goals, inner work, 
again, that goes with the knowledge of the wisdom here. Um, and I feel like this is just saying that um, there's a lot of situations that go are going to be assessed. That could be both political, internal. There could be different ways you could take that. But also from all of that put together, you get a lot of growth. So I feel like there's going to be a growth in humanity. So I feel like all these three go together really, really well. With the tarot, I'm getting um, judgment with the fools. So I feel like this is saying um, some uh, baddies are going to probably vamos. Hi. Says Oldenado Trumpo. Have a beautiful um, time. <laughs> my favorite thing. <laughs> Meet Felicia, the patron saint of goodbyes. <laughs> there we go. Bye, Felicia. Um, Felicia. So we have a victory. The six of wands <laughs> is victory. But if you look at that, that is like a depiction of the old uh, military from the med medieval times, whenever that was, because we don't know our history anymore. Um, and we get the world card. So again, it goes with um, the whole changeover, the whole, and I'm not saying the full changeover, because I think this is a slow drip out. Yeah. Um, but um, I feel like more truths are going to start coming out, um, including a, somebody in particular's um, device of uh, with a keyboard and a screen on it. You know where I'm going with that. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also going to end up seeing, too, a lot of people still clinging onto that old system as well. I keep getting that four of swords. Um, actually, this could be, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking it's a four of pentacles. Yeah. And it's four of swords. So I take that back. This right. is like um, a, a time of rest. I feel like this is saying we need to do some resting. Well, it's funny. I actually think hands keep saying that. They're like, oh, yeah, we, we keep getting they're that a lot. Started. They're like laughing. Yep. They're like, ha ha. You think you're stressed out right now? Oh, I hadn't even started yet, honey. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, this is a time of rest right now. So, we, you know, and that doesn't mean sleep all day. That means don't overdo it. You know, just uh, recharge the batteries, take good care of yourself, salt baths, start kind of reflection. grounding. There's a lot of grounding I'm recommending with that card. So that's what I have so far for Aries. So I got, um, I got the Knight of Wands. So to me, I feel like there's going to be a lot of action during this time. Uh, well, more like we might see more stuff happening, stuff more coming friction. out. More visible friction. Yes, but this girl is happy. She's not even worried about it. Um, so it's not a time to be stressed out by any means. And I got the chariot. So it's coming. Sorry, my light. It's coming fast. Um, just like this is a wands card. So it's like quick. The chariot just charges straight ahead. Um, and he's like protected by all these little fairies. Oh, dang it. You can't really see it. But there's little fairies all around him. About. So like your guides, your guides are helping you. Those are our orbs. Yes. And then I already said I got the hermit. So I do think it's a time to for all of us to really reflect on ourselves, throw out the old and make room for the new. I think we've all kind of been going through this where there's a lot of stuff coming up that we need to work through and just um, leave it behind because there's no room for that as we move into this new age. And at the bottom of my deck, I got the Eight of Wands. So I think we're just going to be getting a bunch of energy, um, a bunch of signals coming our way, a, just a bunch of good energy to help us move on and grow and get to the place we need to be. And you, had some orbs, you had some orbs dancing on your shoulder there. Yeah, I uh, saw it. I saw it too. It was like sparkly. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to have to go back. <laughs> oh, that's oh, I just said. Yeah. Over oh, okay. yeah. yeah. They said we back. Girl. They're like, they're like <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> it's showtime, guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. I pulled from uh, the Moonology deck and then I grabbed one from uh, Work Your Light too. But um, the answers you need are coming full moon and Gemini. So this to me goes with what um, you all are saying about information coming out, um, the narrative that we've been told and we've been uh, kind of has been fed us is is obviously it's breaking in front of our our eyes right now. You know, and the people who have the ears to, to hear and the eyes to see are seeing that. Um, it's waking up a lot more of people, the people whose souls are contracted to awaken. Um, believe in the impossible is the next one. This is the blue moon. Um, so 
I think this goes right along with the answers you need are coming. Like a lot of our history is going to be revealed, like the, the truths, uh, the truths coming out, like you were mentioning the, the uh, electronic device that, that it might be leaked and, and um, exposing all these individuals that people held in their hearts as America's sweetheart or whoever, you know, just idolizing these people and all of that's going to be broken down. Um, the end of a tough cycle approaches. Thank you. That's my favorite card out of that deck. My God, like, <laughs> come on, y'all. Let's do ready. this. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. We've been right. ready. Been re born ready. <laughs> Get ready. Yeah. <laughs> the last one, which is hello, new moon in Aries. I love that. Oh, there it's you new go. Moon. Yeah, time to take action. So new moons are times to uh, set intentions, plant seeds, and um, time to take action. So this, like, um, who was saying grounding? Stephanie, grounding, detoxing. Um, Bryce always talks about zero point, you know, what is it that, that, um, lightens your soul that lifts you, that puts you in a state of high frequency, love vibration. Um, who do you need to be queen of swords with and just cut out of your life because they're not serving you anymore? Not just people, but places, things, ideas, behavioral cycles, all that crap that is, um, repeated programming, uh, that just there to hold you back like that's got to go we're, we're shifting in a time where that's not even going to be um um necessary or uh, acceptable anymore and then the very last one from work your light oracle break the chain ancestral mm. patterns healing and rewriting the future that just goes with all of this healing and rewriting the future that's the new timeline too yeah oh yeah yeah what people this is too we've got like two timelines riding side by side right now one is controlled by the dark one is controlled by the light and the, the paths are already set before on both of them now it's just seeing which one's gonna win and take us to because we're going to go into fourth density it's just whether we're going positive or negative we know we're going positive though and yeah. i pulled one card um so i felt drawn to and it's interesting you said new moon and gemini because which card in the tarot deck represents got a gnat here go gemini. away after the gemini which card represents gemini lovers yeah yep Boom. Mm -hmm. so this could be reconnecting with people that are you need to reconnect with it could be twin flame card it also can mean choices as well that you have choices to mm -hmm. make which path are you going to choose to take and i love the thing i love about fire so much and i know i've talked about this a lot is fire is so freaking necessary for change you know that's one thing that they don't teach us in the west like we think if we get sick it's a bad thing and we got to stop it but in the east they teach you that viruses sicknesses are necessary it's part of the upgrade when you have a fever your body's burning like we talk about the yoga fever a lot like after you, you know, sometimes you'll get a low-grade fever it's your body burning off old karma old and it needs to do that you know it, different different patterns and so we're in this season of fire then all of us collectively should be harnessing that fire for our own individual lives. You know, I think the one thing that we get so focused on the macro on what's happening globally, that we forget that everything that happens globally is influenced by what happens individually and in the micro. And that's where we all, and I think for a lot of us, we, 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 you know, it's not shocking to us anymore, right? It's not shocking that there's nefarious stuff happening in Washington. Like, not shocking for any of us we've gone we passed we've moved past that we understand that that what we what we've been told is the truth so now we have to start to like shift ourselves now and do our own work we call that pratyahara and yoga the self-study of your own patterns i love how you said that ava about oh, even your own it's not even just cutting people out or your own patterns things you do to yourself your self-sabotage your your samskaras that's what we call the samskara it's that it's that uh, like if you have a record and you're the old records or CDs and it would skip and scratch, yeah. that's the samskara. It's a pattern that gets so ingrained in your psyche that it becomes repetitive without you even noticing it. And the fire is what's going to cleanse that. And you have to harness that and create that to use it. That's I love how like, I've been using that word. That's your like superpower. That's your power move is to like harness that and be your own magician, be your own alchemist. And what a fantastic time of year to do that during this airy season, as we're birthing into the spring, which we know is from our studies, that this is the time of the new year, not January. That's not the new year. Duh. Like what's surprising about that? Like nothing is what mm -hmm. they told us it is. This is the new year because we're birthing into the new cycle. And so 
I think that's exciting. I love when people like take their greatest journey as their themselves, you know, is like changing themselves. And what a fantastic time to change yourself because literally the whole earth is about to change too. So why not yeah. join her? You know? Yeah. 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 And so many people are like, what do I do? What do I do? I want to make a difference. I want to help out. I want to change. What you can do is work on yourself because right now is the time to choose which path you want to take and yeah use the fire energy to really um burn off what doesn't resonate with you anymore because you really make a difference when you do that you raise your own vibration which then raises everyone around you's vibration and the whole earth's vibration it sounds like silly but like it really works so doing the little work on yourself helps all of us out and we thank you guys when you do it yeah for sure. Awesome. That's, I mean, that's sweat. That's when you, when you exercise, you sweat, what are you doing? I mean, Ava, you know this, right? Like you, that's like cleansing yourself, isn't it? Like yeah. mm -hmm. your body. my teacher in India, I sometimes I love the way Indian teachers say things because they're just so much more impact. Oh, did y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, hey. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> but um, I, my teacher in India, you know, how we talk, we're, we're sweating out, our, we're detoxing, right? He goes, oh, you're sweating your poisons out. I like that. That's a lot more impactful to say you're sweating your yeah. poisons out. You're sweating mm -hmm. your poisons out, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I had a fever, la what was it, last week, Bryce, or the week before for like a few days? And you and started a new exercise program. Yeah. And I, I started uh, doing a lot of different things to really take my... Um, physical health, my spiritual health, my mental health, it all, you know, um, taken in my own hands and really change it. I mean, I've been doing that for a while now, but I, I needed to also incorporate the exercise. That was the last step of it because I've been doing it in baby steps. And I was so miserable when I burnt the fever. But at the same time, like what I did was I really focused during that time. Uh, thanks to you, Bryce, for, you know, kind of guiding me through that is like bringing up old stuff to purge out. Like I need to learn from this. Like, what am I learning? What am I, what, what no longer serves my highest good. And, uh, after the fever burnt off and I was okay. Um, it's weird because, um, the downloads are even more intense now from the spirit realm. So because I purged out a bunch of old stuff, now the new stuff can start coming in and it's, it's in steps. It, it you know, I'm sure I'll burn fevers again. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. Rest of your life, it'll continue. Yeah, that's another thing too. I want to make that clear, guys. Like anytime you go on like a transformational journey, it's never over. No, it's like always you're always in practice. As long as you're alive, you're going to be in practice. You're going to be in training. And I love Cindy talked about this in our ISIS episode. And I think this is so important and something we can all do. And this is something I really want to shift going forward. And Ava, I know you have training in this too. In the Western world, we see exercise as a form of punishment, like something we dread, we have to do to fit into a certain size gene or, you know, burn off that cake we ate. But what, what they robbed from us and what they teach in these old scriptures from the East is that your, your body is your mind field. So even though the body is just really an illusion, it really is just a Shakti of the soul. It's not, it, it's not permanent. It still carries information. And that information is in your muscles. It's in your fascia. And so if you're not toned, if you're not exercising, that is laying dormant within you. And so every time I do my practice or exercise or something, I like when bar, when I move the pelvis into those pelvic tucks, I think about pulling up that Kundalini, pulling up that muscle, getting it to shift and move. And Cindy made a good point too, especially those of us who are light workers, who are healers. Even if you're just reading tarot cards, you're channeling energy when you do that. And where does that energy channel through? It's an antenna, your body. So you have to flush it. How are you going to flush it? Exercise. If you're not exercising and you're doing channeling, you're doing yourself a disservice because then you've got all this energy in you that's not yours that you haven't released. You know, you haven't sweated out. And so that's, and I love that Cindy brought that up because all the people I know who are heavy into healing all have very strict exercise programs. And that's why, because it, it grounds them back into their own energy and it makes the passage and the understanding clearer. You know, you think about the solar plexus. We were talking about this, Stephanie, yesterday. 
the solar plexus, like a right, uh, that's where your, your third chakra system is, your third energy point. And it's right there at the base where your ribs make that upside down V. It's like right there. All right. It's called your solar plexus for a reason, solar sun. That's where your power is. And there is such a huge equivalent to having a strong core and standing in your power. Sometimes when you feel your weakest is when your core isn't strong. So mind, body, spirit, it's all connected. It's all connected. And I know a lot of athletes, there are a lot of athletes I know that get the same, have the, have the same spiritual realizations that a lot of like yoga students do too, because it just all of a sudden starts to come together, right? I know Ava, you're an exercise science girl. So I'm, you could probably speak on this too, right? Mm, yeah. I mean, I know I also um, did a lot of dance in Florida. I just saw like two orbs three uh, by you price um dance also i mean it's movement it's un it unlocks the body it forces you to have to learn how to um operate and feel your body in space and know yeah. how to control that as well and and like being able to achieve certain things that you had a mental block that's a huge part of athleticism and getting athletes to the next level is getting past those blocks like when i would be training people and my 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 uh clients always said i had an evil laugh because like i'd always i would i'd laugh at them when they're like <gasps> like you know like trying to lift this weight or like I don't, something's really hard, but I was so excited for them. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and so that was just like, that was the, such a rewarding part. It was seeing somebody like snap but, and yeah. get past that point where it, mentally they couldn't before and they're lifting more weight or they, they finally dropped a certain amount of weight or they finally got to this muscle mass amount, you know, like, yeah. and, and because a lot of that is energetic. Um, yeah that we hold or won't let go of it's so when my students in the mysore room um drop an f-bomb or like grunt i always go oh correct correct yes 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 correct <laughs> like, like yes that's correct you know like something's moving right you're getting pissed yeah. off like so that means something is moving and we want that yeah. something to move and that's mm -hmm. the thing too and i know ava knows this as a, a trainer and a dancer like you can bring a horse to water but you can't make them drink that magic, that, that accomplishment. Yeah. The trainer, the teacher, they hold the space and they help you, but you're the one that did it. No one else did it, but you. And that's, and it helps you. Powerful. Yeah. It helps you stand in your power mm -hmm. when you realize, wow, oh, I can do that pull up or, you know, I can run that mile. You're, you're happier. You're literally more confident when you walk into a room. It's a, uh, there's a, a Ekapadashir Shasana. It's a posture in the second series, which takes a long time to get to, but it's one foot behind the head posture. And it looks beautiful on, on Instagram. But when people first start learning, it's like they have a Buddha belly, they, you know, that leg. And it's one of those postures that when someone first comes into the Meister room and they see people doing it, they always think, oh no, I'll never be able to do that. I'll never be able to do that. And I always tell my new students, like the magic of Mysore, the magic of this practice is that one day, all those things that you thought were impossible become possible. Mm -hmm. And when that day happens, when you realize that maybe this is possible is a very magical experience. Cause then you realize that these limitations that you've put on yourself are literally limitations you put on yourself. And no one else put them there. Mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. like Patabi Joyce Guruji used to say, body, not stiff, mind stiff, body, not stiff, mind stiff. How powerful is that? Body's not stiff. Body's just doing what the mind's telling it to do. Mm -hmm. It's the mind that's stiff. And it's, you're right, that, that using the body as a way to like correct the mind, you know? And that's what we're, when we're looking at for two, true transformation, that's what's really happening is the mind is being corrected. Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha, we're looking for the chittam to, to calm the chittam down, to find that Narodaha. Because Narodaha means nothingness. Oh, so whoa. Nothing, huh? You see that big boy? Mm -hmm. Where? Oh, I'm missing it. Rice is screen. I saw. Um, Can we just ask who is that? Can you just ask? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like somebody's trying to say something right now. <laughs> they're like they're like gonna push me over soon and just be on the screen. I'm just gonna <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there's a, I know it's either Mary Magdalene, Michael, or my my grandparents because they've been around for a while too. So um, I'm wondering if it's multiple. It might be multiple right now. Yeah, it's <laughs> multiple. I'm getting multiple yeah. names. 
Mm-hmm. There's a party happening behind my desk. Mm-hmm. Like, party party of braces. All right, we'll be there, ladies, in a couple They're gonna, hours. Like, literally, one day, I swear to God, a big orb's going to show up and just push me off the screen. <laughs> be like, macho now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's Mary and Michael. Mary and Michael. Oh, oh. hi. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Mary's around me a lot, so she wants to be called. As I've said, she wants to be called Maggie, but I always want Maggie. to say Magdalene because that's how people know her. And I thank you to the subscriber that put in the comment section below that when she was channeling Mary Magdalene, she got the same thing that she wants to be called Maggie. So, um. But I'll continue to say Mary Magdalene on screen so people know who she is. But um, but yeah, the Narodaha, the emptiness, once the mind is empty, then that's when the spirit comes in. That's when Ishvara and God can come in is when we let go of all of our attachments. And that's that mental op- obstacle. So, so yes. All right, guys. Well, we've been on for a, over an hour now. So I'm so excited to have Natalie and Ava here. I oh, hope you guys yeah. please go subscribe to their channel. These are my my friends in real life. And so it was super easy to film with them today. And obviously, Stephanie is my, my friend in real life, too. She, y'all know Stephanie though. She's here all the time. So, um, so hopefully we'll do more videos together guys. And again, all of their links are down in the description box. Please go hit subscribe. Um, this battle is being fought on the internet most of all. So we want to make sure we've got all of our warriors. We're subscribed to everybody because if one man goes down and then we have all these other people up that can help direct traffic and, Y'all know what I'm saying. Have to be careful about what I say because it is YouTube. But anyway, all right, ladies. So I will talk to all you guys soon. Bye. 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 Bye.